to record the part two of the Windows subsystem for Linux that we started um, this morning. Fernando, how are you? Oh, all good. Now we are relaxing on the beach here, on the Microsoft Virtual Beach. Yeah, uh, Fernando had the idea to put like a background, use Teams that we are always using Teams to record. And it's just to show how you can relax now with the Windows subsystem for Linux 2 in your laptop and work yeah. anywhere. Yeah, my name is Jorge Arteiro. Um, I start at Azureta and we want to have people to write blogs and talk about Azure. And Azure TAR is a TAR ball for, for Azure. And that second part now, uh, on the on the first part, Fernando, um, we all talk about we, including uh, Nuno Nuno do Carmo, that's our MVP, and Docker Captain was was on the first part as well. And we talk about Windows Subsystem for Linux version two that now is available on Windows Home, Windows 10 Home version 2004, let's say 2004. And um, we show the Windows Terminal, Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 with all these things that we have. Fernando already opened his screen and he has Windows. Yeah, he can show there that. Uh, just to show here, this is the version 2004 from the Windows Home. That's the fresh one just released. Then if you don't have access, you're going to be on the next two weeks. And then if you minimize that, Fernando, you can see that on the first part, we install the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm going to put the link here for you to on the screen for you to look the first part and watch the first part. And as you can see here on the task manager, there is a VM mem. That's where the Windows subsystem for Linux are running inside like a micro VM. And all the Linux distros that you're running here, that will be Debian and new boot on 2004, they run inside that virtual machine. And that's a dynamic virtual machine that's my memory grows up and down. It's very fast and very, you know, doesn't consume much memory. We don't have to allocate like one gig of memory and stuck with this one gig there. It's a dynamic memory. Okay, that's, that's what's new on, uh, on WSL2. And now Fernando is going to show Docker. Fernando, go ahead. I will show how to install the Docker desktop on the WSL2. So this is easy. You go to the Docker website and download. Actually, I already downloaded prior to this presentation. And I also show the Visual Studio Code to show the integrations with Docker. Right, so to install Docker is after download, just click on the desktop installer. You can run everything with the default option. You don't need to change and wait. And uh, while we are waiting the Docker desktop install, I will also install the VS Code. The VS Code you download for code.visualstudio.com. It's easy, only download. It was already downloaded. And so, Install everything as the form. And the Docker is installing. You will install both softwares. The Visual Studio is good, but I will show later. Let's wait a little bit for Docker. When the Docker installator is finished, it will ask to log out and log in again on the computer. We don't need to reboot the computer. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing, Fernando. It's just like you can do just a sign out and sign in again. You know, even where to reboot and it'll be, it'll be very quick to do it. Yes, it's, it's quick. And uh, after the reboot, you see the VM loading the Docker. It will have like a spike in memory, but after a couple of times the memory will return to the normal, to the normal. Oh, and the Docker is almost over. Close and log out, it's done. I'm log out. Login again. And now I will show the task manager. 
the VM man here. What happened now? It's like Docker is booting, yeah? Yeah. Bo Docker is booting. Is it starting? And now is running inside the. If you open the terminal, it would be nice to show. Yeah, now the Docker is, is starting. Let's wait a little bit here. And on the terminal, I open here like in Ubuntu. But first, before, before I, I would like to show the settings first. Let's let waiting Docker start. I run the settings with you and look, we have we had the spike in memory because the Docker is loading. Uh, so here on the settings, you can keep everything default, but the important thing here, you have the Docker AM, the resource and the WSL integration. And per default, uh, the WSL is integrated to the default distro. In my case, it's the Ubuntu 20.04. So I will enable Debian and the Ubuntu. I will apply. I will close and open again the, the terminals. I will show here my Ubuntu and my Debian. I have here the Docker is running Docker, run it hello world. It will load the um, hello world image from Docker. It's downloading from the um, Docker Hub. And cool. It run it, but this is nothing. This is only a screen. Here we have a suggestion to do something more ambitious. So let's do it. Docker run it Ubuntu bash. It will download the image. It's downloaded the image layer by layer. We are inside the Ubuntu, as you can see here. If you go to Debian, there's other distro. We can do that. We can Docker PS. We can see my container running here. And if you do Docker container LS, I can see the container I download. I can open that. I can spin up a new instance. Docker run. New. I can spin up other instance here, but this is other container. And if I run other Ubuntu here, Docker PS, now I have these two containers running. Now on the second part, I would like to show the... Bernardo, just one thing there that I would add something. It's great, I think, you know, you quickly show that you can install Docker and inside the Windows subsystem for Linux and just have these running like in minutes. And um, the memory, I would say, this, that not, like I said before, that's a dynamic memory you don't care about. If you don't have all this memory available, you're not going to take all these things, you know. There's a maximum of memory they're going to take from the, the, the computer. I think that's important to, for them to know. But go ahead and what do you want to show the Visual Studio Code yes. now? Yes, I will show the Visual Studio Code. Uh, and I call with your help to show the new things. First of all, I need to install an extension here to, this is a farming, to connect to the Windows Linux subsystem. I will install this extension. How that works, Fernando? So with this extension, the visual co code will be connected directly to the um, Windows Linux, the Windows subsystem for Linux. And I run uh, here, I connect, I, I'm running inside, inside the container. It's open the remote. I can do the same thing if I leave the terminal and open again because it was just installed. I can run the container here called dot to open. And uh, I'm open straight from the container. For the, for, the, for the for the WSL, you say? For right? the, yes, yep. not, sorry, of better, for the WSL, <laughs> because this looks like a container, right? I'm yep. running inside the, the WSL, inside the Ubuntu, 
I can see the file system here is the same file system I have here. And the last, I will install the ex extension for Docker to show we can run. Where are you going to install that inside the, the Windows? Uh, yes, I'm, sta I'm styling. This is very important. Like in this, in, in, in this instance here, I'm running like on my Windows. I close because I'm not using this uh, instance is running inside the container. So I will install here and it showed I'm installing inside the container. Reload. Now I have here the Docker. Here I have the containers. That you created with. that you created on the command line. That's yeah. nice. That means that you can see everything that's running on the Docker engine itself. Yes, and I can like restart the container from here. I think you can connect the shell, the attach shell. Oh, attach shell. And now I'm connect directly inside the container using the Visual Studio code. This is everything is integrated. If you need to do some tests or to edit some code here inside the container, it's is like if you are working with your our system. And what more? What more we have cool here to show, George? No, I think that's great. Say in a few minutes you you got like a Windows 10 Home. You know that's like you know vanilla for for Windows. That anyone can have a $200 laptop with you know Windows Home, and start using Docker, Visual Studio Code, containers and uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. And, you know, as a bonus, have the new terminal available. And that's with, you know, a Windows 10 Home Edition. I think that's amazing. If you don't know how to install WSL, make sure that you watch the first part of the video. And I would say thank you a lot for Fernando for, for showing this second part for us. And Thanks for having guys. me. It was my pleasure. And thank see you, you guys. Thank you.